Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter at Second Swing. And we've got a great test today, two new clubs from Titleist. Titleist TSI2, Titleist TSI3 drivers. Bit of a chilly day here, uh, late September. You can see the fall colors behind us here. But um, these are going to be available uh, to pre-order on October 29th. And then they're going to be in our stores on November 12th. So exciting new release here in 2020 from Titleist. Uh, these two drivers, Thomas, we've taken a look at them here briefly. We've just unboxed them, unwrapped them. Uh, what do you think about how they look? How do you think they're going to perform? Yeah, so initial impression when I put them down to next to each other, well, I could notice with the TSI 2 looked a little bit more kind of triangular shape, maybe yeah. a little bit larger profile, maybe a little more forgiving model. TSI 3 looked a little more circular, pear shape kind of look, yeah. and a little more compact maybe a little more workable golf club right off the bat than what I can see. Yeah, yeah, and of course with all these club tests, we like to make them you know, as objective and unbiased as we possibly can. Um, and so we've got the same golf shaft and we're gonna be testing these in the same settings, of course. So why don't you enlighten us on those uh, specs for us in this test? Yeah, so both drivers, nine degrees aloft, both in the A1 setting, that's the standard uh, lie angle and standard loft setting on the shore fit hosel. Mm -hmm. um, I've got the graphite design Tor 80 BB6X shaft. Uh, Titleist did send us some more premium golf shafts to test. I know graphite design is an option here with the new TSI line, mm -hmm. but they, but we needed an extra stiff golf shaft for my yeah. golf swing. This is the golf shaft I have played over the last few years before transitioning to the Tor 80 uh, XC shaft. Yep. Um, but this is going to be a great option, great good comparison, same golf shaft, so there's no bias here. Yep, and you mentioned the shaft offerings. We do have a video up as well on covering those and you know how those uh, stock shaft offerings from Titleist for these drivers will play for you and which is best for your game. So um, but with, without further ado, I think we should get going here and hit some shots, huh? Sounds good. I can't wait to uh, get warm here and hit a few swings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Thomas, looks like you have the Titleist TSI 2 to begin with here. Uh, Tyler did a great job with the TS series, you know, really improving that ball speed and then dropping spin as well. Curious to see what the TSI 2 delivers here. Sounds good. So let's hit five shots with this, five with the TSI 3. Yeah. Come back and hit five more and five more and see how they perform. Let's do it. That was hit well. That one looks like it was smoked. Pretty similar uh, line on those five shots. Yeah, th yeah, Thomas, those five were very close to each other out there on the driving range. And first of all, I wanted to ask you about the look and the feel of the TSI-2. And uh, you know, that's gonna be, we know with the TSI-2, it was the same with the TS-2, where a little bit larger shape, yep. um, kind of that center of gravity is deeper and lower. Uh, to give that higher forgiveness, higher MOI, and probably higher launch as well. So what do you think about that look and then the feel of that one? You can definitely notice the more of a kind of like a triangular look with the driver. So you can see how the weight is more distributed back, all the way kind of back here. Yeah. Um, it kind of goes, kind of cuts in corners towards the, to, to the, to the back there. Um, you can tell it's a little larger, more forgiving model versus the TSI 3, which I've just, just happened to take a look at real briefly there as well. So I was really impressed with how straight I hit those five shots mm -hmm. right off the bat. I feel like I haven't seen the dispersion circle yet, but I feel like what I could see where I was hitting and it was just yeah. a little bit left of my target. It looked like the ball was just drawing just a little bit, which is something I've had a hard time with recently. So the ease to be able to draw the ball with this club seemed pretty easy there. Yeah, I mean, it, you're, you're hitting it in a very small, tight circle out there, just a little bit left of the center line, uh, but it is being very consistent for you, which yep. is what you want out of your driver, and it's easy to predict so far, so. It felt really solid off the face, too. Wasn't super loud or anything like that. Um, I know with the TS, TS2, TS3 last year's models, they seemed a little bit louder. This sounded like it was just a little bit softer than, mm -hmm. than last year's model. Be interesting to see how the TSI 3 sounds and feels as well. Yeah, I mean, looking at these numbers briefly, you know, carry 273, uh, total about 305. So that's 
you know, what you're looking for. I know the, your driver numbers and then your smash factor at 150, of course. Yep. They would expect nothing less from you. So, uh, you know, these numbers are pretty solid. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to the TSI 3 because in theory, it's a, kind of a smaller, more compact club head, at least at address. Uh, maybe a taller club face, deeper face. Yep. Um, but we'll see how that compares. All right, let's test that one out. Yeah, this is a different look, that's for sure. <laughs> So much more like the the pure circular shape than the uh, more of a triangular shape with the TSI two. Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, it was more compact, and I mean I can see it from here. I can't imagine what it looks like for you looking at at, at a dress. That yep. uh, you can definitely see a difference. All right. That one's ripped too. Yep. Well, Thomas, cool, yep. what did you think about, you know, we talked briefly about the look and feel, but why don't you compare that to the TSI 2? Yep. So, really can notice a difference in, in the look. The TSI 3 is more rounded in general, so more kind of the, the traditional pear shape look with, with, with the. Uh, with the driver here, looks more compact, a little smaller, maybe a little deeper face. Bull flight, what I noticed is I had a really hard time with the TSI 3 to get the ball to go left. Yeah. I feel like for me, I made five great swings with the TSI 2, or just left of Sandra, a little bit of a drawer. And then for whatever reason with the TSI 3, it was just hanging out to the right side a little bit there as well. Yeah, you had, I mean, the TSI 2 dispersion is kind of, it's in, a vertical oval, right? And then uh, with the TSI-3, it's a horizontal oval where the distance consistency is actually impressive. Yep. The TSI-3, considering that you had a couple that you maybe faded a little bit more than you wanted, and then at the end there, as you kind of progressed, you did get it to turn over a little bit more. Yeah, you were talking about the spin rate a little bit, just being just a little on the higher side with the TSI-3, which you thought was kind of interesting. It's because the ball's curving to the right, even though you'd expect the TSI-3 to maybe a little lower spinning model than the TSI-2. Yeah. Um, it's because the ball flight was curving to the right. It's going naturally spin a little bit more there as well. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed a lot with the TSI 3 was it was a lot more muted sound than the TSI 2. Mm -hmm. The TSI 2 seemed louder. Um, the TSI 3 was really muted. It really just sounded kind of, there wasn't much sound coming off, yeah, the, off it, the face. It has a quiet yeah. pop to it sort of, which is, I think in Tyler's drivers in the past, they've been pretty loud, I guess, which, and that's up to the player. Some players like a loud driver, some like a more muted driver, but that's one thing that you definitely notice with these two models is the TSI-2 does have a little bit more noise to it at an impact. Um, yeah. One I thing was... to touch on with the numbers here, I just wanted to point out curvature. So on average, you were curving at 30 feet with the TSI-3 and just five feet with the TSI-2. So, so 30 feet to the right with yeah, the yeah, TSI-3? Okay, yep. So, I mean, that does, show the workability there of the TSI-3. You know, that's the more compact head shape. Center gravity is not like deep and low yep. as it is in the TSI-2, and that will create more curvature on the ball. Whereas the TSI-2, high MOI design, that speed optimized MOI design, uh, high forgiving. And clearly, you know, there's not a lot of curve going on there, even if you do miss it a little bit. Well, the nice thing also with the TSI-3, you mentioned the, the word workability is the adjustability you also have yeah. the TSI-3. So they've, they've changed it up. You've got the perimeter kind of waiting back here where you can make it a little more draw and fade bias a little bit there yeah. too. And you still also have the shore fit hosel settings that we can adjust upright yeah. or add a little loft or make it a little flatter or decrease a little bit of loft. So mm -hmm. there's adjustability, a little more adjustability with the three versus the two as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Well, why don't we solidify these numbers a little bit more, hit five more shots with each one. Sounds good. That was a miss hit. That might be the best one. Yeah, that one's rocked as well. 
I think it was after the third shot there, Thomas, you had said that right after you hit it, that's a miss hit. And you were yeah. curious uh, about how, you know, the numbers would, would show uh, for that shot. And I want to go to that one. It was number eight there. Uh, you know, it was the 149 smash. I mean, you okay. missed it. So it was a little left true. of the center, just slightly heely. Yep. Yeah. And then you we were worried about the spin jumping, but it only went to 26-20 on that one. Okay. Uh, so, you know, your third shot there, you jumped up, what, three or 400 RPM compared to what your average is so far with the TSI-2. So uh, that's, that's a pretty darn good miss hit for the TSI-2 there. Yeah incredibly forgiving it did exactly what i wanted to do just turn over just a little bit right to left i mean i think i just hit those 10 shots i don't think i could draw a circle with a driver with 10 shots in a row yeah that tight together yeah I especially mean, when it's windy out right now it's cold <laughs> trying to get to 110 miles an hour for my swing speed a little bit here mm -hmm. and i was really impressed with uh how well this performed it, it surprised me because Personally, I feel like I like the look of the TSI 3 better. Yeah. But I kind of said to you off camera, I was like, wow, I really impress, I'm impressed with the TSI 2. I actually sneaky like the 2 better. But I want to hit five more with the TSI yeah. 3 just to kind of see how that performs. Give that a second chance there, too. All right, sounds good. Yep. Those are some good shots there, Thomas. Yep. Uh, you had, you know, it seems like the, the penetrating fade seems to be the kind of trajectory of choice for this driver, um, which is not a bad thing. That thing, uh, that can definitely be serviceable out on the golf course. Uh, looking at the dispersion really quick, I mean, it's, the TSI 2 is incredibly tough to beat. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's a very high standard, but this is pretty close. Uh, the, as far as a distance consistency, probably the same, if not better. Um, and then I think you were just able to turn over a little bit more at the end with the TSI-3, but um, I mean, it's, this dispersion pattern is incredibly tight out there. So uh, props to Titleist, that's, that's pretty good for these two drivers. TSI-3 and TSI-2, the TSI-2, you were right, it was incredible. I probably didn't really need to make any adjustments with uh, the TSI 2. I was pretty happy with that just left of the center line. I feel like it was maybe five to ten yards left. Yeah. I, I was happy with that. I would, you know, I'd sign me up right, right away. Um, TSI 3, you can do so much more with this thing. Yeah. So I'm thinking of fitting capabilities with the TSI 3. I, from testing it originally here, knowing this is a little bit more of a, it seems like more of a fade bias setup. When I look down at it, I feel like it looks like the face is just a little bit more open. Yeah. And I think you you could make this a real anti-left golf club. So talking about kind of adjustability, center of gravity adjustments, yep. you could make it fade bias by putting the center of gravity out on the toe. Yep. You could make it flatter, you could turn the loft down a little bit. And for someone that comes in and say, hey, I just hooked the ball, I'd give me something I can maybe hit a little bit straighter. This would be a great option to yeah. maybe make kind of adjustability reasons as well. Same time also, if there's a player like myself <laughs> that likes the look of this club better, can't get over look, but is fighting that right ball a little bit, you do have adjustability options. So you can move that weight a little bit more in the heel. Yep. You can make the club a little bit more upright, maybe add a little more loft to some along those lines. And then you could then make that club a little bit easier to turn over as well. So yeah. you really do have a wide range of adjustability options with the TSI-3 as well. Yeah, Thomas, you're right about that. Uh, there's the extra adjustability there on the TSI-3 with that weight in the back. Um, and the Surefit Hosel, of course, is on both models. But that would give us the option to say, you know, maybe we'll do a video in the future here where we expand on the options of adjustability here. And maybe in this instance, we would put that weight bit more in the heel and kind of create more of a draw bias for you. But uh, in this test, you know, the numbers are very comparable. Uh, carries about 275 for both. Total distance is about, you know, a little over 300 yards. And so, I mean, there it's very comparable. And I think one thing we noticed too was maybe when you did get the ball to turn over a little bit with the TSI-3, that spin was significantly lower. Uh, well, probably, what, four to 500 RPM lower maybe 
uh, when that had that left ball compared to the TSI 2. Yeah, that one that I got it, got to turn over, I think it was maybe shot eight or shot nine with the TSI 3. I think the spin was like 17 or 1800. I think that was the mm -hmm. only one I saw that was under 2000 as yep. we were hitting these shots here too. So that, that intrigued me a little bit there too with regards to bull flight and how that influences spin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'll give these numbers to you and okay. then you can break them down further and see uh, what the major takeaways are of these two drivers. Sounds good. All right, Thomas, you've got some of the data there. Um, it was pretty impressive there. Those numbers were pretty solid. The ball flights were tremendous. Not a lot of curvature, especially with the TSI 2. Yeah, so for the purpose of taking lead with these numbers, I'm not going to take out any single shot. I hit literally 20 shots right there without taking out a single miss hit. So it's going to be interesting to take mm -hmm. a look at the 10 versus 10. So first thing, club speed, it's about 50 degrees out right now. Yeah. So first thing is I am hard, getting a hard time to get my club speed over 110 today, 109.1 versus 110. So swinging in the same environment, so that doesn't change the numbers at all. Some people that watch some of our videos may notice that sometimes I can push the envelope a little bit and get a little bit close to 112, 113 at times. Yeah. But for testing purposes, they'll separate by one mile an hour. What's really interesting to see is with the TSI 2, I was a little bit less with the club speed, so 109 versus 110. Um, but the smash factor was higher with the TSI 2 at 1.50 versus 149 with the TSI 3. So the ball speed was almost as high with the TSI 2 and the TSI 3, um, even though I wasn't swinging quite as fast. Yeah. So that just kind of talks about the forgiveness level with the TSI 2 versus yep. the TSI 3. Um, so very forgiving. Um, we touched on spin rate a little bit. We're, I mean, the spin rate numbers are great. 2300 versus 2350, separated by 50 to 70 RPMs between yeah. the two of them there. Mm -hmm. um, dispersion, so the fact with the TSI 3 that I was hitting the ball to the right side, TSI 2 is maybe having a gone straight or just a little bit left of it, of center there. Um, that is the reason why the ball was spitting just a little bit more. Curvature was creating the spin. Um, the TSI 3, I would expect to spin maybe two to 300 RPMs less when I'm hitting it straight versus yeah. straight. We did see that with uh, the one that I did get to curve a little bit right to left with the TSI 3, that it spun like 17 or 1800 RPM. Yeah, I think that was yeah. shot number eight with the TSI 3, went to like yep. 16 or 1700 RPM, um, which was on that same sort of ball flight pattern um, that the, most of those TSI 2 shots were, and that was kind of that drop in spin that we're talking about uh, with the TSI 3. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's the kind of the key, and that's sort of what the theme was for TS2 and TS3 was you know, the, the TS2 is that forgiving, deeper, lower center of gravity um, to provide that more forgiveness when you do miss the center of the club face. And the TS3 was, uh, you know, that more compact uh, and more workable club. And I think that's carried over in the TSI2 and TSI3. I was impressed with how little curvature there was in the TSI2 and then how, you know, even when you did hit miss one out to the right or you kind of hit the face open, the distance really kept up on the TSI3. It did definitely keep up. You can see east to east to west, the red, you know, the, the consistency on the distance was pretty pretty accurate there. Yeah. So this is a carry distance here we're, we're seeing. Um, so that you can definitely see that even the miss hits were carrying between just under 270 and just a little over 280. Yeah. It was kind of the, the range with, with, with both clubs there. So that was, that was impressive there to see. Um, jumping back, looking at numbers a little bit here, we can see uh, Carry distance just a little bit higher with the TSI 2 versus the TSI 3. It was flying just a little bit higher. It was flying about seven feet higher in the air. Yeah. Um, now we are hitting up the hill a little bit into the wind a little bit, so I think that's why the peak height in the 80s yeah. is showing on, on, the, on the numbers here. Yeah. Takeaway from this is TSI 2 just flew a little higher than TSI 3. Yeah. That's Which, probably the takeaway. Take that was probably what we should have expected too, given the way the clubs are designed. Uh, yep. You know, the, the higher MOI, more forgiving club head, most of the time it's going to fly a little bit higher. Yep. Um, also, launch angle was slightly on the lower side there there too. We both, t both club heads were nine degrees aloft. If I had seen this and I was in an inside environment, there was no wind, no elevation or yeah. anything like that, I probably would have added a little loft to the driver head for, for, the, for, for a player. But because mm. just knowing the environment that I'm in yeah. right now, I, it's hard for me to really try and hit the ball high when I know it's going to go straight up into the wind. <laughs> yeah. 
So that's one thing to kind of keep right. in mind here. We do have the normalization button and everything yep. like that. So the numbers on there are, you know, as, as accurate as we're going to get. But yep. um, I, I agree. I mean, any, you know, besides a robot, anybody hitting into wind is going to be a, a little bit affected by it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So TSI 2 launched about a degree higher than the TSI 3 and flew about seven feet higher than the, um, than the 3 as well. So that's kind of interesting to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the curvature, you mentioned that, see on average feet of curve was 10 feet to the right with the TSI-2 and 25 feet of right with the uh, TSI-3. With the 2, it was basically the exact same ball flight for all, yeah. all 10 shots. With the 3, there was a couple out to the right. There was a couple that I'd get a little bit left there as well to help with that average. Yeah. But the consistency on the TSI-2 stood out to me for mm -hmm. sure. The forgiveness level and the consistency, that really stood out to me. Um, and you can see that taking a look at the dispersion pattern here again. We're, we're talking, yeah, just a little bit left of center. Now that's the wind also bringing that that way there as well. But we're talking between probably 15 yards of right to left difference in 10 shots. It's pr pretty good yeah. when the ball's going off 300 yards. Right. Yeah. And I mean, fairways are not, you know, fairways are a lot wider than 15 yards, you know, so. Uh, those balls are very close and you know one of the things we do is we use premium balls for these tests uh, just to make sure that you know we're not using range balls and if you haven't seen the range ball video yet comparing them to premium balls they want to check out and see the differences that you might see with a driver that i think you definitely a difference in launch angle height and so we want to use premium ball we got to go retrieve these and so the nice thing about thomas hitting them all in the exact same spot is that they're going to be easy to pick up out there um, and with the tsi2 extremely repeatable ball flight uh you know there was very little curve on pretty much all of them and they all kind of again they're all going to be within a small circle out there so you can pre-order these on october 29th the t title is tsi2 and tsi3 driver and then they'll be in our stores on november 12th so uh, something for you guys to look forward to titleist again always has some tremendous equipment whether it's golf balls of course but also their golf clubs and they've been really improving on their drivers and you can see it here with the titleist tsi2 and tsi3 so uh, again, talk to one of our fitters, talk, stop into one of our stores, and we'll get you set up with a new driver. So, Thomas, thanks for hitting the shots today and breaking everything down for us. Yeah, not a problem.